So prepare the sorcerer's machinations and dust off the rubricate. Today we're talking through the strengths and weaknesses of every Thousand Suns unit. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Thousand Suns, and as we've done with a bunch of other factions in the game, I thought we'd take a look at each one of their units, talk about some of their positives and drawbacks, and how strong I feel they are overall in 40k right now. As it goes, I feel like the Thousand Suns haven't had the worst ride of it throughout 9th edition. They've been kind of solidly mid-tier ever since their codex dropped, more recently helped out a little bit by Armour of Contempt and some cheaper Rubric Marine upgrades. I do feel like their codex maybe has some standout units and a lot of stuff that's kind of mediocre, but in general I think it's probably better that they focus on their iconic units, and I do think it's pretty fitting that the Sorcerer's Rubrics and Terminators make up the backbone of the Legion. In any case, let's go through the units, talk about some of the positives and negatives, and a very rough score out of 10 for in-game power, and we'll go through each section of the codex in turn, starting with the troops. So first up, and in pride of place, we have the Rubric Marines, 21 points per model troops choices, and these guys were already solids, but went into an absolutely great place after some recent points updates, plus the extra survivability that they got with Armour of Contempt. For 105 points, a squad of 5 of these really is quite tough, They've got Objective Secured, Armour of Contempt, a 5 plus Invul, all this dust for a boost against 1 damage weapons, and are also nice and fearless as well, so you don't need to worry about some surprise morale casualties. Their standard bolters maybe aren't absolutely outstanding damage, I would say that they're a little bit underwhelming on the damage front, unless you upgrade to the Warp Flamers, but that's still not really the end of the world for a unit that mainly just needs to be holding down objectives and being tough. Otherwise though, they do come with a Hidden Psyker for Smite, or Temporal Surge, the Psyker could do some cheap Psychic Secondaries as well. Even small investment objective camping units could make use of a cheap 5 point Soul Reaper Cannon, that's quite good firepower for the 5 points upgrade, and the units have now become really quite efficient for farming out Cabal points as well with those free Icons of Flame. They're a core unit and are a good target for support options, things like Temporal Surge, or other Psychic buffs from Sorcerers or Infernal Masters, and maybe particularly so if you choose to equip them with the 3 point warp flamers, which actually make them into a fairly scary shooting unit. If you are going heavy on the warp flamers, it makes them quite a nice squad for teleporting around, maybe with Court of Duplicity or the Crystal, and you could amp them up with extra damage as well, say the Infernal Masters plus 1 strength, or the 2 CP boost for plus 1 to wound. Finally, they've also got access to Risen Rubricae, which could allow them set up midfield if they need to and a minus one damage stratagem, which can be very efficient if they do get shot by two damage guns. Overall, I'd rate them as an all-round standout troops choice. Perhaps their biggest weakness is being a little bit on the slow side without any buffs or anything, but that's really not the end of the world, and I'd overall rate them a good 9 out of 10. The vast majority of lists are going to include at least some of these, and plenty will absolutely spam them. I think I could have been persuaded to give them the full 10 out of 10 as well. They really are very good. Next up, we've got the Thousand Suns Cultists, Really quite a nice cheap alternative to the Rubric Marines. 5 points per model so they can be available in cheap squads of 50 points. Really quite nice for camping home field objectives for super cheap, or maybe rushing forward and doing actions and things. Potentially things that you don't want to dedicate a full squad of Rubric Marines towards. If you really don't want to take that many Rubrics, then they could help fill a troop slot as well. Maybe if you're going for a bit more of a Terminator spam list. But overall they are quite handy to have access to, just because they're so cheap and expendable. On the downsides, they really don't do much damage, they're not core. They don't have objective secured, and they do have pretty mediocre defence against anti-light infantry weapons, stuff that isn't going to trouble most of the rest of the army. Still though, I do think that they're pretty usable. Cheap and disposable units are handy to have around, even if they're not going to be doing any wonders on the damage front. Overall, I've rated them an 8 out of 10, maybe slightly on the lower side of that rating though. Next up, we have the Mutant Goatbird people. The Zangors are kind of the Thousand Suns unique cultist unit, 7 points per model, and they are perhaps a little bit hardier than the cultists at toughness 4 with a 5 plus invul save, though in terms of point per damage it is kind of close. Unlike cultists though, they do do at least a little bit of fairly efficient damage, either 3 attacks with a chainsword, or 2 attacks with AP-1 with the blades, in general stuff that's going to threaten light infantry, but not really all that much else. You can get a cheap plus 1 to advance and charge from the Brayhorn, and you can get some easy buffs from the Zangor Shaman, such as plus 1 to hit, or re-rolling all hits in melee for 2 CP, if you did want to deal a bit more damage. Overall though, I do feel that between the Rubric Marines and the Cultists, I just don't really feel that Zangors have much of a foothold in the troops section. 
Rubit Marines are just a fair bit more efficient in terms of damage and defence overall, and if you just wanted a cheap unit of non-rubrics to screen or do actions or something, then I think Cultists would usually do the job cheaper, and are probably the better pick for that case. While they do have buffs available, I feel like centering an army around them is a bit questionable, as they will still always struggle to deal with heavier targets, and it just leaves them in a bit of an awkward spot. I feel it'd actually be really quite interesting and good if they took a point off them, maybe, or maybe some sort of buff to actually make them a bit more threatening against most units, rather than just light infantry, both of those could help. Otherwise, I'm a bit unconvinced about them at the moment. I've scored them a 5 out of 10, although maybe that might have been being a bit harsh, they might have deserved a 6. Next up, for transporting units, and rubrics in particular, we have the Chaos Rhino, 80 points for a model, and it's got okay durability with Armour of Contempt and a 5 plus invul save. The invul's quite nice versus Melter. Compared with Rhinos and other factions as well, it is quite nice it gets the Inferno Combi Bolter, and he could take another one if he wanted for another 5 points, and that does spit out a fair amount of fire. In general, its main purpose is getting Rubric Marines to where they need to be. Can be one way to get a little bit more mobility out of one, if you're using something like Temporal Surge elsewhere on something more valuable. And then after that, after it's deposited its Arcane Cargo, you could be a bit more of a sacrificial unit on objectives, or just generally get in the way and do nuisance charges on the enemy. Obviously, as a dedicated transport, it's not super great on its raw combat stats, and in 9th edition games, speed isn't always the biggest issue. Stomping slowly up to objectives can be absolutely fine, and Thousand Suns do have some teleport tricks and double move shenanigans, which can make things a bit faster. It also does prevent any psychic from being used by the unit while they're embarked as well, which can be a bit of a negative compared with having the Rubric Marines on the field. In general though, I'd say it's pretty usable. I wouldn't want to spam them across the entire army, but maybe one or two for some fairly mobile Rubik Marines does seem fairly solid. Overall, I've ranked it a 7 out of 10. Next up, and moving on to the Elite section, we have the Scarab Accord Terminators. 40 points per model, and pretty much one of the big linchpin units of the entire Codex. It's very rare to see an army list without at least one big unit of these, and often there's two or more. Overall, their unit just adds up to being Rubric Marines, but bigger, tougher, and more threatening in combat. They've got objectives secured for holding down those points, combined with a really durable profile with the 2 plus save, Armour of Contempt, all this dust, Fearless, and their Invul. On top of that, you can use Psychic to get them a 4 plus Invul, a minus 1 to hit, and they do have a pricey minus 1 damage stratagem as well, though it could well be worth it if you're going to be shot by a whole load of dangerous guns. As the biggest and most dangerous core unit in the book, they're excellent for any damage dealing boost as well. It seems to be at least a fairly common combo to make their shooting very scary. Take a couple of Soul Reaper cannons, a couple of Hellfire missiles, make them hit on twos with Presage, and then give them plus one to wound and plus one strength with a Stratagem and a Psychic cast. With all of that going, you should have enough AP-2 shooting to put a lot of hurt on a lot of targets, even really tough ones. Like the Rubrics, they have their Hidden Aspiring Sorcerer for a bit of smiting or perhaps Temporal Surge. Their combat's okay, with a bunch of attacks at Strength 5, AP 3 and Damage 2. They can Deep Strike if it makes more sense to, though a lot of the time it might just be best to start them on the board. And they're a very good target for any Resurrection or Healing tricks, such as Cult of Time or the Rites of Coalescence upgrade. Overall, a bit of a linchpin unit for the Thousand Suns. Again, perhaps their main weakness is being rather slow and potentially ignorable if you're not able to double move or teleport them, and the damage output isn't super standout without buffs from the various psychers, but I guess that is kind of the point of them. Particularly in combat, they could underwhelm just a little bit if they did get tagged by something with minus one damage. Still though, an all-round powerhouse damage dealer unit for the Thousand Suns. I've chosen to rank them the full 10 out of 10. Pretty much always a unit that you'd want to build around in a Thousand Suns army list. Otherwise, in the Elite section, we have the Hellbrute, a new slightly cheaper cost at 105 points, a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, master of none maybe, okay durability with a 5 plus invul, a bit of anti-tank shooting and melee, and potentially can be set up in long-range anti-tank configuration, which isn't too bad to have as it kind of covers a faction weakness. It's a core unit for potential buffs and re-rolls and things, but overall, maybe its damage and defence just aren't particularly stand out, and particularly for the melee versions of it, the slow 6-inch movement does hold it back a bit. As with quite a lot of the Thousand Suns multiple, perhaps one of the main weaknesses is that it just doesn't have that much synergy with the psychers and all the buffs that you can put out. It generally just seems to be a better strategy overall for the army to stack more buffs and psychic powers on things like rubrics and scarabs from sorcerers and things, as opposed to go for a mechanised Thousand Suns list, which they don't have that much support for. Still though, not unusable, I'd rank him a 6 out of 10 overall. Next up we've got the Zangor Shaman, a 70 point cheap casting character on a disc, and this guy's particularly handy for being a bit of a psychic action monkey, zooming around the board at fast pace and getting where he needs to be, 
and allowing the other units to get on with the more serious business of destroying the enemy. I've seen a few people use that Seeker After Shadows Warlord trait to allow him to do a psychic action and another cast, and if you do happen to be using Zangors, then you could also buff the damage for them if they happen to be around. Overall though, if you do just want to support other units and get Psychic on the board, I don't think it's quite as efficient casting as the Exalted Sorcerers and things. And while his speed is great, he doesn't have all that much in terms of melee damage or durability, though ideally I guess he'd want to be hidden behind other units most of the time. In general as well, I feel like he might be a bit worse in game modes not using secondary objectives like Tempest of War. But overall, in things like the Grand Tournament missions, he's really quite solid. I'd overall rank him an 8 out of 10, very usable even if you take no other Zangors in the list. Moving on to Fast Attack now, and here we have Spawn, a unit that I really like. These guys are 23 points per model, and you can basically fill them in two different ways. Either just a single 23 point model that's just an annoying nuisance unit to put onto objectives, and maybe force the opponent to come out to deal with them, and then hopefully expose themselves to a whole fusillade of Inferno Bolts and Mind Bullets. Otherwise, I think they're also very, very usable as a big ranked up block. They could be an okay target for Temporal Surging up the board, that could allow them to pull off some long charges, and they're a really, really nice target for the 4 plus Imbol save Psychic Power. Unlike the Rubrics and the Scarab Occult Terminators, they don't have a good save already, so going from basically nothing to a 4 plus Imbol is a big deal. Otherwise, for their cost, the raw melee is pretty decent at AP2 and damage 2, plus some boosts for mutations, and they've got a rather nice 1 CP stratagem for an extra attack, plus your choice of damage buff on the mutation roll. They are fearsome as well, the minus 1 leadership might occasionally help out. In terms of weaknesses, I'd say they're probably a unit that you don't want too many of. The low save means that low AP attacks can kill them fairly quickly, even with an invul save, and they are a good target for those sort of light infantry guns. They can't do a bunch of actions as well, and they've got far less big synergies than Rubrics or Scarab Occult Terminators, and even fewer than Zangors. Overall though, I think they're a really solid unit, definitely very usable at a competitive level. I've ranked them an 8 out of 10, I certainly could have been persuaded to put them up to a 9. A bit less positively, though still just about usable, are the Zangor Enlightened. They're a fast attack choice at 18 points per model, and you can get them in quite small little units of 3. The main advantage of these is just literally being a cheap nuisance unit that moves fast, it means they can get to objectives quickly, maybe might be able to do certain actions that don't require them to be infantry, and could do well for a bit of board control, screening, and encouraging the opponent to make bad trades of units. Their damage output isn't stellar, but the great boats can be interesting for sniping characters hitting on a 2+, and they do have a chance of auto-wounding. In general though, their main advantages are their cheapness and their speed, their damage and defence aren't particularly exciting. I don't think that they're really interesting enough to bother with buffing them from outside, and if you are taking fast attack, then I'd be a lot more tempted by spawn myself. Still though, a cheap unit of them could be kind of handy. A fast moving and irritating unit to deal with, and might help win the mission a bit, even if they're not going to win the battle for destroying the enemy. Overall, I've ranked them a 6 out of 10, not unusable, but probably not going to make their way into most competitive lists. While we're on fast things, I thought we'd cover the faction's flyer in the Helldrake, a 165 point vehicle choice that again may be similar to the Zangor Enlightened really does trade out a fair bit of efficient damage dealing for being very very fast and this guy's basically good as a quick moving nuisance unit that can cause some damage to exactly where your opponent doesn't want it. The Bale Flamer might be able to reach critical targets, it can engage targets in melee as well and actually have some okay efficiency melee if the opponent happens to bring planes. If you're nearby some Thousand Suns units, you might be able to use Ensorcelled Infusion for a bit of extra AP if it matters. In general though, vehicles just don't really have a lot of synergy with Thousand Suns, the damage output really is very low for 165 points, and its durability, while not terrible, is a bit so-so. It is going to need to throw itself up right next to the enemy to make the use of that speed, and that means that it could get taken out. I ranked it a 6 out of 10 overall, interesting enough for an annoying unit to mess with the enemy's plans, but again probably not going to make its way into many competitive lists. Next up we're getting into the heavy support, and alongside the tanks this time we've got the Mutalith Vortex Beast, a very cool warp monster kit, but does kind of scream I was ported from Age of Sigma as opposed to being designed for the Thousand Suns. Maybe a bit of personal opinion there, I'm not denying that the miniature is a really fun one. He's 145 points, and despite that big warp vortex, perhaps the main thing that he brings to the table is still melee damage, 5 attacks at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 3, or a big 15 against light infantry at strength 7, AP minus 1 and damage 1. Not really great against medium infantry, but really quite efficient against hordes. His toughness is okay, 14 wounds with a 5 plus invul and regenerating some wounds is alright, it's still not super outstanding though for a unit that's likely to be at the very front and centre of the army. 
The Warp Vortex does have a choice of a few fond powers, particularly up close, it will be able to vomit out a few extra mortal wounds to add to the large amount of psychic flying at the opponent, and it does allow a couple of stratagems, a 1 CP to heal D3 wounds on a psyker, and a 1 CP to gain D3 cabal points if there's a psyker nearby. It's a bit of a mixed roll thing that does bring some benefits, but I still just feel that this guy is just overcosted by maybe something like 10 to 15 points. I think if he was a bit cheaper, then people would run him a bit more. But the Warp Vortex Mortal Wound powers just don't give you all that much damage output. The melee just isn't super outstanding, and the stratagems are kind of okay, but they're not outstanding seeing as you have to pay the CP for them. Overall, I'd rate him a 6 out of 10. Again, certainly not unusable, but solidly behind the best things in the Thousand Suns army. For perhaps one of the worst units in the roster though, at least in my opinion, we have the Land Raider. 245 points, pretty tough with Toughness 8, the 2 plus save, and Armour of Contempt, and some okay firepower with the last cannons and the heavy bolters. As a big unit packing a fair amount of guns, it could be okay with that Ensorcelled Infusion stratagem again. The extra AP could be helpful against Armour of Contempt. In general though, I just don't think it adds up as being very good for the Thousand Sons. Thousand Sons don't really struggle too much for durability, the Rubric Marines and the Scarabs are already very good on that front. It's got the Land Raider issues of trundling a whole load of expensive guns up to the enemy to act as a transport, and then maybe getting tagged in combat or something. Vehicles just don't do so great with the Thousand Sons faction as a whole, and I'd argue that there's probably no units that really want transporting in a Land Raider. It's just too expensive to justify for Rubric Marines, and for the Terminators they more want to be on the board, making use of those Inferno Combi Bolters being able to use their psychic powers and being targeted by other casters ones. You're better off getting mobility out of them by using Temporal Surge or teleporting them with a crystal or with the duplicity power. Overall I've ranked it a 3 out of 10, I just don't feel like this guy has much of a good role in the army at the moment. Continuing with a brief look through the motor pool, first we have Predators, 115 points base, again a source of long range firepower with the option of Ensorcelled Infusion, and unfortunately just not a very strong vehicle all round, not particularly tough, not particularly exciting for the damage output it brings, I'd say it's probably worse than just the Hellbrutes with the last cannon and missile launcher if you want a gun turret, they've got core and can get rerolls, and he might also be better off with the Chaos Contempt of Dreadnoughts from Forge World, I've ranked it a 4 out of 10 overall. Next up we've got the Vindicator, 120 points base or 130 with the siege shield. As it goes, I think that this guy's fine. His damage output with the demolisher cannon isn't too bad. For a vehicle of its points cost, it's really quite tough, particularly with the siege shield giving it a 2 plus save. Armor of Contempt does work quite nicely with that. The main disadvantage is, is that it's got d6 shots and d6 damage, which is a bit random, and the short range and the blast rule means that it really, really doesn't want to get locked up, perhaps even more so than the Land Raider. I'd say it's usable enough as a bit of a distraction carnifex type unit, perhaps a model to trundle up the centre of the board and have the enemy focus their attention on, when actually the bigger threats are the foot troops. Next up we've got the Defiler, 165 points base, and I'd argue probably the least efficient out of the three heavy support demon engine options. It does have some threat at range and melee, which isn't bad, its guns are fairly general purpose, and it does have an okay defensive profile regenerating wounds. Again though, along with the normal Thousand Sons problems of vehicles just not being all that standout, again I just feel like this guy is a fair bit overcosted for what it really brings to the table, and unlike the other generalist the Hellbrute, it lacks the core keyword as well, just making this guy feel a bit underwhelming. I've ranked it a 4 out of 10 overall, maybe that's a little bit on the harsh side, perhaps could have been a 5. Next up we've got the Forge Fiend, 140 points base once you've paid for a couple of guns, in general, out of the heavy support gun choices, I'm a bit more positive about this one. I feel like it's not a bad meta pick at the moment with the ectoplasma cannons. A fair few lists do like to have big ranked up blocks of three wound elite infantry, and the blast rule can kick in for those, meaning that you get a full six shots against them. Again, if necessary, you could use Ensorcelled Infusion if you want to be hitting some high save Armour of Contempt things, and unlike the Predator, it does have some fairly decent defence with more wounds than the Predator, and also regenerating wounds. Again, besides certain stratagems and things, you can't get a lot of buffs on this one. Again, it really doesn't want to get locked up with those blast weapons, and perhaps not one that you want to go too heavy on. A bit of a luxury pick to have Loki in the backfield, and chip away a bit at some elite infantry. Lastly for the heavy support, we have the Mauler Fiend, 140 points base, and basically a scary dedicated melee threat, with 6 attacks at strength 14, AP 3, and damage D3 plus 3, with the option for either Lasher Tendrils or Magma Cutters on top of that. The combat damage really is quite big and meaty against heavy hitters, this thing can do a horrendous amount of damage to an Imperial Knight in one turn. 
Otherwise, for the points cost, it's got some okay speed and toughness, though with the 10-inch movement and a big vehicle base, and a unit that wants to be in combat, it can have some issues with going round terrain. As a dedicated melee beast, it does have the potential for being screened at if it matters, or shot down before combat happens. Again, maybe like the Vindicator, a bit more of a distraction type unit, hurl it up towards the enemy. It gives them something that they basically have to deal with unless they want to take a whole load of damage from it. But again, maybe it's not super super standout in terms of points efficiency. Overall, I'd rate it a 6 out of 10. Again, usable, but not really playing into the main strengths of the army. Moving on to characters now, and in the Lord of War slot, we've got the big man himself. Magnus the Red went down to 420 points in the last points change, and it did make him quite a lot more playable than he was before. Obviously, as a Primarch and the Faction Commander, he's got a whole load of good stuff going for him. It's very, very fast with a 16-inch movement, not a unit you're going to be able to ignore if he does go aggressive. He'll command other Thousand Sons well with four V-rolls. Some very solid combat with eight attacks at a big strength 16, AP 4, and damage 3. Naturally, as perhaps the most gifted Psyker in the galaxy, he has an enormous amount of damage on that front. The caster almost guarantees between his various different boosts that he gets, plus he knows all the powers for some crazy flexibility, is able to deal extra wounds with a super smite bonus, and just flat out ignores perils of the warp. He gets multiple warlord traits, so is quite efficient to be the actual faction commander, and is very easy to field in a supreme command detachment, he shouldn't be competing with slots with other things. All of that's legitimately very good stuff, but it is just all undermined a little bit by his main weakness in that he's just not all that tough. For those 420 points, he's got 18 wounds, a 4 plus invul, and minus 1 damage, which on a per model basis just isn't really all that terrible, but for that amount of points, it's really not great on a point per point basis. If the opponent does manage to focus him down, you risk losing almost a quarter of your army in one fell swoop, and it puts him in a bit of a difficult place whether or not he wants to fly forward and go aggressive, and then just risk getting shot down as soon as he's gone for his outing or try and play defensive and stay alive for the rest of the game, but then maybe not do enough damage to live up to that big price tag. 18 wounds doesn't really help him with the latter of that either, it means he can be directly targeted behind obscuring terrain, so unless you've got some very big tournament style L-shaped ruins and things, he's not really going to be able to hide. Overall, he's a bit of a mixed bag. If you are in a situation where you can keep him alive for the majority of the game and dealing damage, he's almost certainly going to be worth the points. If he can't and he gets shot down too early, he's a big liability. Overall, I've ranked him a 7 out of 10. A bit of a high-risk, high-reward unit, but certainly a very fun unit to play in-game. HQ's next, and first up we have Mr. Araman, responsible for making the Thousand Suns so dusty in the first place. He's 160 points as a unique character, and seems to be basically in auto-include territory within the Thousand Suns army lists. The Sorcerers and the Psychic Powers are basically one of the biggest strengths of the faction, and it would be playing a Thousand Suns in a very weird way indeed if you weren't taking a bunch of HQ choices with Psychic Powers. In general, a lot of competitive lists seem to max out the HQ slots. We've talked about a bunch of the spells already, but it's got 18 to choose from, massive damage and defensive boosts, or just a whole load of mortal wounds out of their Great Witch Fires, plus Thousand Suns have the option for Cabalistic Rituals, which will make them get cast a lot more reliably. Araman in particular gets three casts and re-rolls, he's very reliable indeed. You can use him as a bit more of a support piece for other units, or you can just put him into damage mode and take all the witch fires and fly around blasting things off the board with mortal wounds. I think the option to field him on foot or on a disc has a bit of debate. Generally I feel that the disc is probably worth it for the extra mobility, though on foot isn't terrible either. For the points alongside the other sorcerers, there's certainly no combat powerhouse, but at least he has a little bit more damage than some with that 3 damage black staff. As downsides for him, you can't take your choice of relics, warlord traits, or legion command buffs on him, so it's worth taking another character alongside him. And as with the other sorcerers, he doesn't really have much melee damage, or isn't particularly tough for his points cost, but as he should be generally protected by other Thousand Sons units, again that isn't the biggest deal. Overall, the sorcerers are basically some of the strongest Thousand Sons units there are. Araman is very, very commonly competitively played, and I'd rank him a 10 out of 10. In a very similar light, and often bodying up with Araman to back him up, we have the Sorcerers. There's three different flavours in the Thousand Suns HQ section, the Exalted one, the Regular one, and the Terminator one. Out of these, I would rate the Exalted Sorcerer the highest. I think he's probably the most efficient for what you get overall, but depending on your list or exactly what you're after, the other two are perfectly usable as well. They all get two casts, but the Sorcerer also gets the option of a reroll aura for 10 points, which I think is pretty good for Captain-style rerolls just for that upgrade, never mind an extra attack and extra wound. He's also the one that gets the option for the Disc of Zinch as well, and it's quite a common choice to take the Rahati upgrade on him for an extra cast, so he could maybe belt out Smite alongside two other powers. 
very efficient all around, and a model that seems to make it into most Thousand Sons lists. Otherwise, the standard one could be okay if you're really on a budget and need to save those 10 points. It does have the Loyal Thrall upgrade that could make it a bit better for doing psychic actions, though you might be better off with a Zangor Shaman for that role. The Terminator Sorcerer isn't bad with built-in Deep Strike and better durability, but again you do pass up a few interesting things like the Disc Mobility and the Rahati upgrade. As Sorcerers, again, most of them don't have that much defence besides the Terminator one, and don't have a ton of melee power. They're not absolutely awful on that front though, seeing as they cost a lot cheaper than Araman. And perhaps just in general, Psychers being at the core of the faction does give the Thousand Suns some weaknesses overall. Anything with good Psychic Denial abilities like, say, Grey Knights or Sisters of Battle and things, this might cause them to have a bit more trouble. Still though, along with Araman, Sorcerers are going to be absolutely the heart of just about every Thousand Suns army. Again, I've ranked them a 10 out of 10. It's pretty much never going to be a mistake to take an Exalted Sorcerer along in a Thousand Suns list. Finally, last but not least, we have the Infernal Master, a 90-point character which I mainly just see as a side grade on the Sorcerers. He still gets one Psychic cast, so he's doing basically the same job there, but then backs that up instead of with a second Psychic power, he gets a Demonic Pact. The two ones that everyone seems to go for are Glimpse of Eternity for an unrestricted reroll, and Malefic Maelstrom for a plus one strength boost at range. The Glimpse of Eternity is actually really quite powerful. Command rerolls can only be used on certain things, but this one is really quite unrestricted and can be a really nice thing to have for the rest of the turn. Malefic Maelstrom for the plus one strength at range is great as well. Awesome on things like Scarab Occult Terminator's Combi Bolters or Rubric Warp Flamers. It could even be used on vehicle firepower if you wanted to in a pinch. I quite like the way that if you need them desperately on any one turn, then if you do fail the 3 plus to cast them, then there's a 1 CP stratagem to auto pass. It makes him into a far more reliable character and one that you can always trust to do his job right provided you've got a CP spare. Again with the Sorcerers, not much defence and not a lot of combat power. But again, a model that makes it into the vast majority of competitive Thousand Suns lists. Again, I've chosen to rank him a 10 out of 10. Finally, in the HQ section, we've got the Thousand Suns Demon Prince. He's an HQ choice for 140 points or 175 with wings. Still casts two powers. And basically, over and above the Sorcerers, you're paying all the extra points for a fairly scary combat monster on top of that. A high AP, damage 3 sword and a bunch of attacks. Plus, he's a bit tougher as well. Thousand Suns do have a few interesting damage and durability tricks. That conniving plate one is quite a nice one to put on this guy. It basically allows you to only target half of your attacks towards him, so it means that he's basically twice as tough to kill in melee for a lot of units. Perhaps his main issue is that he's got competition from a lot of good characters in the HQ slot. If the Sorcerers were a bunch less efficient, I think he'd be taken more, and he's quite pricey for the additional option of having good melee. For his fairly pricey points cost at 175 with the wings, his toughness still isn't particularly great if he is exposed to return enemy fire though, and dedicated anti-tank shots will bring him down. Overall, I'd score him an 8 out of 10. Very usable, but probably eclipsed in the HQ section with other things you might want to bring. Finally, although they're not in the codex, I thought I'd just touch on a couple of the more relevant Forge World options. I feel that in particular the Chaos Contemptor is quite an interesting unit for the Thousand Suns, the rules found in the Imperial Armor Compendium. You do pay a bit of a premium for the long-range firepower that it brings, either last cannons or twin volkites, lightly backed up by the missiles. As it's a core unit, it can be pretty good for buffs and things. Presage could work out quite nicely on it, as could Ensorcelled and Fusion to get AP1 on the volkites if you're not playing against Armour of Contempt things. It does cost a command point though, and you might just be better off buffing up the firepower of things like Scarab Occult Terminators. Otherwise, perhaps for a few other interesting choices, the Terax Termite Drill or the Dreadclaw Drop Pod could be interesting for delivering Warp Flamer rubrics. Maybe not super duper necessary, as you could get them there with various different ways. There's Rhinos, Temporal Surge, various ways of teleporting or Risen Rubrique. But still, these things could be an annoying nuisance threat, even after it's dropped. If you need a little bit of Ignore's Line of Sight Barrage Firepower, you could think about the Whirlwind Scorpius. It is significantly less good after the barrage nerf, making it minus 1 to hit and worse AP. But still, sometimes depending on the game that you're playing, having the ability to target something that you can't see could be quite a big deal if it does finish off something important. Finally, the Leviathan Dreadnought is another good big tanking unit to slog up and maybe take a bit of firepower. Pretty tough with that 2 plus armor save plus armor of contempt, and quite nice general purpose damage dealing with those grav bombards. Good to have it chewing away at the enemy while the rest of the army moves up. It doesn't really want to wind up in combat though, unless you've given it one of the melee weapons. Overall, I'd rank the Chaos Contempt to an 8 out of 10. The rest probably somewhere around a 6. There is a whole load of Forge World stuff that I'd rate more underwhelming than that. 
though I wouldn't necessarily expect all that many Thousand Suns players to have in their collections anyway. So there we have it, a brief roundup of just about every Thousand Suns unit, and a few thoughts as to their strengths, weaknesses, and overall power. I hope you found that at least somewhat interesting or useful. As always, if you do think that I've ranked anything too high or too low, let me know down in the comments, and also any tips for using any of the units that I might have missed. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new things most days. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the content on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that one down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.